Hi, this is 365801 and this is a Manga Freakathon reading vlog. Well, I hope it's going to be a reading vlog, but I'm, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, the, my computer uh, software for editing has not been great. Mm, hence the, the lack, the dearth <laughs> of videos that I'm able to produce. Also, I have been working an awful lot. And um, and even having to take work home with me, which has not been good. Um, I'm going to have to stop that. Do not want that to happen. Anyway, it is Manga Freakathon. Now I have, or I started anyway, I have started The Vampire and His Pleasant Companions. This is volume one, which I have read. I owned this first and then I read it. Uh, so it'll be a reread, so I'm um, up to date. But I've only just got a wee bit through it. I'm not I'm not, I think I don't, I need to find my wee thing. But yeah, I'm not that far into it uh, because I was a bit busy yesterday. Um, so it is Sunday today, Sunday the 8th. And I've had not read any manga all month because I've been so busy. Isn't that terrible? I feel really like, bad. Um, and I have so much stuff that I need to do. I've got some like net galley stuff. I've got, I think, Edelweiss stuff I need to do. Um, and I have all of the, the manga that I bought last month to read as well. And unfortunately, my video, uh, even after editing it, got corrupted. And so I need to redo that video, my whole video. So it's going to be really late. <sighs> I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not happy choppy. So this is a buddy read, The Vampire and His Pleasant Companions. I need to go over the Manga Freakathon uh, bingo board prompts and see... Um, and I was, I got like my uh, uh, pad of paper out and I was doing my own version just so I knew what the prompts were so that I would be okay with actually getting them done. But yeah, so I've started this. I'm already behind. <laughs> Fingers crossed everything turns out okay in the end, but I do not know. Um, I have a list of things that I need to do here from my house and then work has been kind of crazy. So yeah, fingers crossed everything works out and I get back to my normal uh, routine of reading manga as, <laughs> as often as I possibly can. Because um, I do like Manga Freakathon. And this time last year, um, I think I had a complete blackout by the 10th. And I haven't even read a single book all the way through. And it's the 8th. Anyway, I'm going to be watching the Grand Prix, so I'm not even going to be reading this. Um, so I'm going to be watching this one. Uh, this is Qatar. Very exciting. It's been a sprint weekend, so I have watched a little bit of that when I got home from work yesterday. And this is me just getting home. I've had some soup, chicken soup and a sandwich, and now I'm going to have a Halloween-inspired um, donut. It's just different coloured sprinkles, that's all. <laughs> and a cup of coffee, because it's kind of cold. Put the heat on. This is it. It's the start of start of the cold season when I have to put my heating on um that's that's the real indicator of the seasonal change uh but yeah I'm gonna enjoy watching the Grand Prix having a coffee relaxing and then going back to work tomorrow <laughs> we'll, so we'll see how much I get that power and his pleasant companions done this is Buddy Reed with Bazaar and maybe with Katie as well actually so yeah um I think we're going to be doing two Buddy Reads this month so I've got to pull my finger out of my ass. <laughs> I've got to get this done. <laughs> um, but I know I like this one. It's Marimo Ragawa. So um, hopefully volumes two, three and four will be just as good. So while I'm trying to um, sort out some computing issues, <laughs> again, again, Microsoft, um, this just arrived in the post. So I'm going to see what I got. I don't actually remember what it is um, oh well there we go so this is actually a second hand a uh, copy that i got and it's got a little bit of denting here at the bottom you can see oh someone's getting back to me and maybe needs a little bit of a cleanup but it's in pretty good nick because i didn't have this one and I know that volume seven has come out now, but I'm always one behind. Uh, but I did pick this up, I think, for six pounds. 
So I think that's pretty good because these are usually around £10. So I can add this to my collection. And no, I have not read volume 2 and onwards. And I do now need to get volume 7. <laughs> and it's pretty dense. So I'm probably going to be like uh, binging it anyway. So yeah, there we go. Pretty good. £6 worth. Hi, this is 365801 and this is a reading vlog restart. It's a restart because I did start this vlog already and I'm coming back to it now. So yeah, um, it, a lot's happened now. Today is actually the 30th, <laughs> the 30th of uh, October and I have not read a single manga. I have read stuff, um, but mainly they've been audiobooks because I've been able to have them with me when I've been traveling. I've had a lot of family visitors. I've had a lot of time to, uh, I had to travel to a family gathering and then I had some family visitors. We did lots of cool things and we went places and, um, and then they came and visited here and then I had more visitors and then I got sick. I don't know if you can tell my voice is maybe a little bit more nasally. 
Um, but yeah, so I have not made any progress at all this whole month with my manga, which is terrible. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed. I have some lovely things to eat today. I'm finally on like proper solid food again, cooked food. This is about as cooked as I can make at the moment. <laughs> um, this is an egg and potatoes gone. And then I've got a pancake and some lemon curd, fancy lemon curd stuff as well. Nice bon maman, um, that I need to eat. And, um, yeah, so I guess we we're going to have like a 24 hour, maybe, readathon. <laughs> challenge for myself um to try and get through as many of the Halloweeny manga freakathon buddy reads um from this month there is going to be one vlog from October and it's going to be today <laughs> I also have to go into town um as well so I'm gonna have an appointment so I I have other things to do as well so yeah <laughs> let's see how much I can actually get done and finish this volume because I started it and I might need to restart it because I can't remember. Um, it was the 8th and I literally just read like about that much. I hadn't read it all. So um, yeah, something to eat first though and we'll get started with the day. So I have a couple of parcels here. Um, I actually have a couple more <laughs> I haven't opened. I literally this whole month have just been like Oh, I'll get round to opening them, and I've got them on a huge pile. I've got my jacket on, I'm about to go on. Um, let's open some then, shall we? Let's, let's do it, let's do it. Let's, let's start with this one, shall we? I don't really think I need my scissors. Should be all right. I have no memory <laughs> of the things that I've purchased. Let's see. Oh, it's another Sasaki and Miano. This one is volume seven. Can you see? There we go. Show Harusono. Um, this I obviously got from Momox. Um, yeah. So now I have what volume two and volume seven. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a while before I can actually sit down and read this, and I am gonna binge. It's gonna have to happen. Um, because I kind of want to. It's been such a long time since I actually watched the anime. But yeah. Very happy about this. I know I got it for a goodbye because everything I get, I get for a goodbye. Um, do I know what that goodbye was? No. <laughs> no, I did not. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to finally have gotten on the little train of collecting these. Um, I definitely need to uh, make sure I've got my list sorted so I can actually do that. But yeah, Sasaki and Miano, very good. And Momox in very good condition. Let's see, this one, I do need my scissors for. Let's see. Oh, I need to lift it, cut that way. So, right, hold on a second. <laughs> this, is, this is complex. Right. What? There we go, two books, this first one. Oh, I forgot I got that. That's right. Um, Think of England by KJ Charles. I really love KJ Charles. I really do. Lie back and think of England. Oh, so good. So good. I do think I need a, to do a reread of just the things I love. And KJ Charles's writing is something I love. This is part of a two volume series. The other one is called Proper English which is a sapphic romance, which I, I would like to get as well. Um, but Think of England as kind of turn of the century, 1904. Turn of which century? Yeah, that century back back then. And I, t oh, I love it. I love it. And it's a precursor to the, um, uh, the Will Darling adventures as well. So you should read this. And then read the Will Darling one, which, which is like 20 years later. So these characters are, are kind of still in existence within a universe. And oh, I love it. Love it so much. So yeah. Think of England. Very, very good one. If you like mystery, country house estates, um, this Edwardian period. Is it Edwardian? I think it's Edwardian. Um, yeah. Oh, with a bit of male, male romance. Love it. Love it. Um, on to the next one. 
it is another KJ Charles as well. This is the fairly new one, The Secret Lives of Country Gentlemen. The second one has just come out and I was supposed to get an ARC co copy of it on NetGalley, but I didn't download it in time before it got archived. Uh, so I will just have to pick up a physical copy, which is totally fine. I got this for a really good price. Um, and I'm looking forward to reading them both. I also need to get her, is it a pocket full of something? Uh, which is like short stories. Um, but I'm I'm doing very well on collecting KJ Charles. So yeah, KJ Charles. That was the two things that I got from World of Books um, for very good prices. And I'm very, very happy about that. Anyway, it's almost time for me to go. So I'm going to go to my appointment. I uh, will take you along with me. So I just got back from um, my little trip into town and I did get this finished on the way back. It was a bit dark in the bus, but I just kind of finished the last few pages now. Um, this is obviously the reread, so um, it was just like reacquainting myself with the story. Poor Albert. <laughs> I do remember it now. It was like, oh yeah. Um, he's just a young boy and, and something terrible happened to him and he is just the most adorable little bat. Oh, look at all his wee faces. Look at his face. He's so cute. He's so cute. Um, but I do feel sorry for him. I feel sorry for what he's had to go through and he's still, you know, still got that young manness to him. Um, and he just be transported across the world. And have to put up with, you know, pretty pretty shitty situation. Um, and then what's his name? Akira. Um, he's just a bit of a tindere, tindere. Um, or maybe maybe he's just I don't know. It it leads more questions. And then this absolutely horrendous cliffhanger. I totally forgot that it ended with this um. I won't I won't mention what it is, but a really big cliffhanger and I had forgotten that that's how it had ended and that's why I was so determined to to pick up the rest of the volumes. So I'm gonna look forward to reading some more of these. I won't obviously get them all done um tonight. And I'm hungry, so I'm gonna go put some food on. But yeah, ah, oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to read the rest because it's really good. Anyway, while I've got the books here, I thought I would show you some of the things I picked up. Now I went to the works and I picked up Portrait of a Thief, which I've heard some stuff about. Um, 
it looks quite good. Um, and like a sort of heist, like Chinese diaspora, I think. And I don't know, but I, I thought there was some sort of queer aspect to this. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm going to have to read it to find out. If you have read this, let me know. Because um, I've seen it everywhere and it just kind of has this vibe of uh, like, oh, it's that one. But I don't actually know anything about it. I don't know anyone who's talked about it, except I kind of get this general vague sense that it's well liked. So, yeah, let me know if um, if you read Portrait of a Thief by Grace D. Lee. Um because I want to know. And I, of course, just got it for a wee cheap one. And um, the, the girl at the checkout was like, you know, it's three for six pounds. And I was like, I know, but the other ones in that in that group, I'm not really that bothered about. So I just got it for two pounds fifty. Um, I also, in the charity shop, found uh, Payback's a Witch <laughs> for two pounds. Um, I love revenge stories and I love witchy stories. It says 9 IP, but I actually paid two two pounds for it um depends on how many times this book's gone through the the charity shop system i don't really mind but yeah i have seen this before so i heard it was quite good so it's kind of a you know it's what today's the 30th so it's quite a good good one to to buy in october um and then i found this one which i'm really excited about and it's kind of shiny and it looks really good um, the Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pooley. Um, and I've heard about this as well. And I've seen this all over Instagram or Bookstagram. Um, and also, is this maybe queer? Is this queer too? Let me know. Let me know. <laughs> I've seen, or is it that Natasha Pooley's written books that are queer? Uh, but yeah, I've seen this as um, on a few people's Instagram as kind of the people who also read things I I know are queer. And then I've got this one, which is a lovely hardback. Lovely for two pence as well. And this is Murder on the Christmas Express. Uh, so this was last year's. This just came out last year. So this is a fairly new book. Um, I had to check and it's like 2022. Yeah. So um, a new one. And it just looks in really good condition. And nice end plates and stuff look i love that i love that it's not a map so much as you know like the map of the cabins oh wonderful so i can't wait to read this one it looks great and it's a christmasy one so i'm gonna read it at christmas i cannot wait i do like um you know specifically i'd like seasonal things and this one it looks very seasonal so i'm gonna enjoy um 18 passengers seven stops one killer fabulous so i'll probably enjoy this one as well so yeah um these will all have to go on my uh october haul because i haven't actually filmed it yet because i still have a couple more packages to open we'll do that tomorrow um so yeah <laughs> which i'll need to film as well i'll be late doing that one but yeah moving on to some more i will see how much i can get read um over the next two days well tomorrow and yeah, I might have to, I might have to continue this manga freakathon slash buddy read uh, slash reading vlog <laughs> to November. We'll see. I'm going to see how much I can get read. Um, I'll check in with you in a bit when I get some food. So before I move on to volume two, um, <laughs> this is my dinner. I've got some ramen. I just, I just kept it in the, the pot. I just put everything on top and I'm going to use it as my bowl so I don't need to actually wash a bowl. Um, so I've got some fried veggies. This is like stir fry veg, like mushrooms and carrots and broccoli and some pickled ginger. Uh, there's some cheese in there as well. <laughs> some fried chicken and an egg. It's looking pretty good actually. It's going to be good. And I think actually eating out the pot might be quite nice. Um, I'm going to move my book though. I don't want to get it splashed. But yeah, this is going to be absolutely delicious. So it's the next day. I have now read both volumes one and two. It's also Halloween. Happy Halloween. Woo um, I can't believe it's the last day of October already, considering how much time I've had and not actually been able to read this. So I'm really looking forward to moving on to volume three. Um, 
this this one I got like for a really good price, but I don't think it's ever been read, so this is pretty good. This one I also got second hand, and it's not a hundred percent. But um, it's still pretty good neck, so I'm really happy about that. Anywho, I'm loving this. I'm loving it. I knew I would because I really enjoyed the first one and it ended on such a cliffhanger. This one, I remembered, it's been a few years since this came out. I just want to check to see when it did actually come out. Um, 2021. So around that time, um, G from Simply G was doing or G Reads, was doing like weekly um, lives where she would talk about all of the things she'd read that week. Um, and I remember her talking about this particular uh, volume and how it did have a bit of gore and a lot of violence and animal cruelty and how you should go into that knowing that so I was forewarned because even though it's been a few years it always st stuck with me because having read this first volume um, and seeing how cute he is as a bat um, I was aware that that was that was coming up but oh my god it was still really difficult to to read and to see and then when he you know transforms from a bat into a human you're just like oh my god oh um so yeah this particular volume has the aftermath of what happens in the first volume as well as subsequent um violence against him um and a massive shift it's a massive shift from this first book to the second book in terms of their relationship with each other and how close they become um, it's almost like night and day sorry <laughs> excuse the pun but it is a bit like that because um, and the catalyst is him getting attacked and, and having to heal and then what comes from that so their relationship is, is moved on quite a lot and uh, I love the extra characters I love the other characters in this the what's his name Nura Nukari Nukaria Nukaria um I don't want to show too much just in case you, um, yeah, Nukaria. Nukaria is such an interesting character, um, I really like him as well. But look at this cutie pie, he's such a cutie pie, he's a wee bat. Um, so I'm interested to see how this goes, because this feels like the, um, these first two volumes kind of feel like a conclusion because of Nukaria's involvement in the investigation of the serial killer um and so this kind of feels like a conclusion so i'm wondering what happens in volume three and four i don't know if i'm gonna get incubus read at all but i'm gonna see if i can read as much as i can of the vampire and his pleasant companions today i have work i have to go to work um in a couple of hours and I'll probably not get home until late at night when it'll be dark. So I'm kind of missing all the trick-or-treaters and stuff like that. So um, this vlog will continue on into <laughs> November. It will have to. It'll be the first or second and I'll have everything finished by then. Um, There's just two buddy reads. I have other things I want to read, but I will read them in other vlogs. But yeah, my the other thing I will read is Incubus. So I'm going to carry on with this. But I'm going to get ready for work I'm gonna have a shower and everything like that I'm still feeling a bit bunged up and it is chucking it down outside so I'm gonna put like waterproofs and lots of layers on and stuff because it's a bit chilly as well and as I have the cold already or I'm like recovering from the cold I don't want to get worse but I have to go to work so unfortunately <laughs> I can't just stay home again like I did last week when I was really really bad with the cold but this is um like super super rainy so i'm gonna probably take some spare clothes with me as well anyway i'm gonna get ready if i read some more of this before i go to work um and maybe make some sandwiches or something to take with me um i'll check in with you just before i go so these are the two packages um let's start with this one i'm trying to remember i think i remember what this one is and i think i remember what the other one is but um like i said i've been buying things throughout the month and, and some things haven't arrived uh, so there will be a haul in November. I know for sure. Let's see what I've got. Ah, oh, yes, 
this right? This was um very cheap. Like considering the first volume isn't. Ogi Summer Break Volume 2 in physical form. I got this for like five pounds or something from Amazon. Which is pretty amazing. So I read um volume one in September as part of my Tokyo Pop Digital readings for 1330. I'll put a link or I won't, depending if I remember. <laughs> um and I was really intrigued by it. I don't think it's to everyone's taste, but I found it interesting as an exploration of someone's, someone else's exploration of their gender and sexuality and how they represent themselves and how gender can be a spectrum rather than just a binary. So um, I think it's interesting. I also think that they're both a little bit weird. <laughs> I'm not going to deny that I, I think they are both a little bit weird. There is also, obviously, disability rep as well. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it's to everyone's taste. I know some people have read it and been like, eh, and some people have been like, mm. um, but I thought it was okay. I just thought it was very interesting. So yeah, I'm happy to have this, another physical Tokyo Pop in my title, in my collection, because I don't have many titles uh, physically. Considering they are churning them out at quite a, a rate. And I feel like I need to have um, more of a handle on when things are coming out and when they're not. Uh, so yeah, I have Ogi's Summer Break Volume 2. Which means I can continue with it. Because I don't have this digitally. Which is great. Uh, let's look at the other one. <clears throat> so this one too. I think I do know what this one is. Um... But I think I ordered this one. This was at the bottom of the pile. So this one has been in my house unopened for quite some time. So I must have ordered this probably in September. And I I think I know what it is. Yes, I was right. <laughs> so this is uh, Jealousy Volume 2 by Scarlet Barrico. I also managed to pick this up for a really good price. Um, and it still has its plastic on. It was not recommended retail I paid for it I think it was around five pounds as well I'm doing quite well with the five pound mark um for some things <laughs> but yeah um jealousy volume two is what I need to have the next one so I do have volume one two three and four volume four you can always get for a really really good price because there's an old man on the front cover a very unattractive old man on the cover and no one wants to buy it <laughs> so it's not exactly the most uh, BL-esque um, so yeah I just need to get volume 5 which is I think the pink cover and I will have a complete set so I just need one more volume and I will have the complete jealousy which means then I'll probably have to read it and I don't want to <laughs> I do because it's Scarlet Barrico and she does amazing beautiful artwork and interesting storytelling but I was not a fan of fourth generation um, head for obvious reasons, it made me feel very uncomfortable. Like many people, it made them feel uncomfortable. And jealousy, 100% will be making me feel uncomfortable as well. I know that already going into it. And so it it's a, a one and done. So I will not be reading this until I have volume five. And until someone forces me to read the series. Um, and then I will read it once. I will talk about it. And then I'll put it in my drawer and probably never read it again. Uh, because... It will probably make me uncomfortable. I, I'm assuming. I'm assuming. It might be a beautiful story. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I know that... Uh, <laughs> considering these are two two stories that have made people feel slightly uncomfortable. But there you go. Anyway, I'm going to go get ready, like I said. And uh, check in with you just before I go to work. So I'm kind of ready, half ready. I'm about to start getting properly ready to go. Um, I don't know if you can hear the rain. It is raining heavy. And I'm still feeling a bit meh. I've taken my medication and everything. I shouldn't be going outside. But work. So I have to. <laughs> um, I just started volume three. So I'm like just a little bit into it. And it kind of makes me feel like, oh. It was like they were saying season two of this story. So I'm guessing um, this is like a second volume. Because this is an adaptation from a, a Narase Konohara story. So I'm guessing the first two volumes, because it did feel kind of complete, was the first story of the two of them. Um, because it kind of felt wrapped up. 
And then this is the start of another story. Um, so that kind of makes more sense. Anyway, um, I haven't really started it. It's just kind of getting into it just now. Um, but Al feels like he's more stable and happy in his job and work and uh, able to argue and fight with Akira and also looks super cute as a bat. <laughs> um, but I just got a text message from a work thing. That's not the work I'm going to today, but the other work, business work. And I might need to sort that out. So I'm going to try and see if I can do that before I go. So this is the last update for today day maybe unless I get some more red when I get home but it will be late at night probably around 10 ish so I might get a bit of reading done before I go to bed we shall see um this is going to be a very strange Halloween so we'll try and see if we can get more done tomorrow um into November <laughs> I feel bad but this is just how my body is at the moment um hopefully I won't be too tired because I was I'm knackered I was knackered today as well um and I don't think I'm fully healed yet not well 100% so yeah we'll see how much I can get done I would love to just sit here and read the rest of this because I'm really enjoying it but I've got other things to do so yes I will check in when I've got a bit more read so good morning um I've got my coffee here yay we need it mm. um I have finished the Vampire and His Pleasant Companions, or at least what we have of it. This are the four volumes. Um, and I did think, did I hear right? That volume five is being printed in Japanese, which is great. Hopefully, that'll be good. Um, I'll take it. So I did finish, or I did read anyway, um, the rest of volume three last night when I got home from work. Um... So probably just before midnight. So I didn't get finished before the end of October. And I've read this one just this morning. So I've just finished this one. Um, I feel like this volume three and four is like once again another kind of set piece. So like, I, I mean, I don't know what the the actual novel version by Narese Konohara is, but it seems like this is like a volume of the story um, and you see a lot more of their relationship together um, and them kind of getting to know each other as well but also you get the introduction of new characters like Muroi here um, who's quite pivotal in this <laughs> section uh, it turns out that he um, is gay and he has a bit of a thing for Akira and during the what else do we get we got something else as well <laughs> yeah oh look at this it's so cute we get a lot of cute badness look at this cute badness um but yeah we also got this little story at the uh, at the beginning of the vampire that he met in america which was quite interesting i really enjoyed that little tidbit as well but yeah muroi is gay he has a bit of a thing for akira and he's confessing when Al comes upon them and Al gets upset about how blunt and obtuse Akira's rejection of Muroi seems um, and when you're reading it that's maybe the first impression um, and I was like oh okay then but then when he um, gets called out on it Muroi says I don't feel any kind of desire for anyone I'm frigid and it was like oh okay <laughs> because I don't feel any kind of desire for anyone is 100% the definition of being asexual so I was like hold oh, da dog wait a minute is this asexual representation in a BL that's kind of explicitly stated because I cannot see that as being anything other than without saying the word asexual which is so annoying because sometimes sometimes you want it to be explicitly said um, and sometimes you don't I guess sometimes I enjoy the the ambiguity of it because being asexual is kind of ambiguous in that you don't necessarily know that about yourself 
you just feel like there's something wrong with you for a long time until you learn about it. And, you know, as someone who's an old lady, that's not something we were taught when I was young. It's not something that my generation knows about. So a lot of people who are my age, they're like, oh my God, you know, oh, LGBT, like what's all of this? And you're like, yeah, but you know what? It really helps people to know about themselves. If there's, if it's, if that information is out there and available to know, you know, I just think how wonderful it is for young people these days to be able to explore that by learning more about it because that information is accessible and it's not, to, it wasn't to people like me. Um, and so that's really interesting. I, I find it interesting that, that they put this in here and it kind of does make a lot more sense about how he's rejecting him. Because if you've ever had the experience of rejecting someone, and I'm sure most people have at some point been like asked, you know, oh, hey, blah, 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 or do you want to go out? Well, you know, at any point in time, and you've had to turn someone down. And you've been like, oh, thank you. That's very generous of you. Very kind. Or I'm very flattered. Um, but no, thank you. And that's not enough for anyone. <laughs> That's never enough for anyone. So when he's saying like, you could be a cat, you could be a dog, you could be a rock, I still would not feel anything for you. I'm like, preach. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, nah, not interested. Um, he's definitely asexual and most possibly aromantic as well. And I'm like, yeah, amen to that. <laughs> oh, 100%. But when you're trying to let someone down and say, sorry, I'm not interested, even if you just say, oh, I'm very flattered, but no thanks, that's never enough. You need to give some sort of reasoning. But you don't owe someone an explanation of your sexuality at the same time. And he feels like he has to because he's badgered into it. And that's that's something that if you don't know you're asexual, if you can't say, I'm asexual, um, then you have to say something about yourself. And he says, I'm frigid. And that's kind of an in interesting word, choice. I know that both of the creators, the author and the manga guy, are both women. And frigid, from a translation point of view, is quite interesting as well, because it's a sort of gendered term. I know it's not gendered, but it's been gendered in the, in the usage of it, usually associated with women who won't have sex with someone. <laughs> it's used as an insult. It's used in a derogatory fashion. It's not particularly pleasant. It's not a nice word. You know, all of those statements are true. They're, they're, they're factually true in the fact that it's never seen as, oh, what a compliment. <laughs> oh, she's frigid. <laughs> like, no. And it's usually associated with women. So I do find it interesting that that's the, the word choice used. Um, but I can't think of a, an equivalent for men and that means it is very gendered. Because what is the equivalent for men? And then how do men feel using or being referred to in that way? Because, because it is so gendered. Anyway, it's that's that was what I thought from this. I'd love to hear what other people think. Um but yeah, so that was kind of a big thing. I I liked that it made Akira's uh, character make a little bit more sense. <laughs> I do think that the authors have used like, oh, he's the way he is because of his background and his, his upbringing and some trauma from his childhood and things like that. And you're like, because that's what you find out a little bit more about. And I'm like, no, he could just be asexual. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with that. You could come from a loving, supportive household and yet you'd still be asexual, you know? The, I, the, the, the re reference of it being something that's caused by trauma is not correct. Um, because a low libido or a psychological uh, trauma is not the same as just not having any desire so yeah it was that was really interesting I think that was that was like the turning point for me to go wow that's really cool <laughs> asexuality and of course there's a lot of gay um jokes this was a big thing about the doctor and stuff as well um but this is kind of heavy there's a lot going on and um their relationship is 
is difficult because you do have Al wanting to make a connection with Akira and Akira needing to keep him at a certain distance because that's where he's comfortable. And I like that. I like that there is a bit of push and pull that you can have that sort of uh, you can care like Akira does. He cares deeply about Al. He cares and uh, is kind and um, looks out for him and is generous. Um, and yet he's a bit of a tundere, but that's fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was an interesting one. I won't go too much into the the details of the um, the mystery because you know there's another there's some more murder and there's some more mystery but it is based on acting and things like that and Akira kind of goes out of his way to try and um, mitigate any pain or uh, problems or or discomfort or anything that Al might feel by saying that you shouldn't be doing this this isn't good he's trying to protect him um, which shows his kindness and caring uh, but yeah, there's definitely a lot more of explorations of feelings and the depth and the intensity of the feelings between um, all the different characters with Muroi being in it. I really enjoyed that a lot. And of course, a bit of um, dressing up and acting and things like that. I do like um, manga about acting and things like that. That's why I probably liked uh, that Mamahara Ellie one. <laughs> But yeah, it's still got a little bit of murder. <laughs> um, and it was a good conclusion to this one. But it it does, there's a lot of um, the exploration of feeling that Al is like, I want this for us. Um, and Akira saying, no, <laughs> I don't. Um, and it needs to be, you need to have that give and take, a push and pull of uh, uh, negotiation within a relationship. You can't expect someone to, to feel the same way if they're a different person. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. It was really good. <laughs> I knew I would though. I knew I would. And Al is a super, super cute little bat. He's just the, the, the sweetest, the cutest. Anyway, um, I did get a couple parcels today, but this is now officially November. I have now officially um, not made it to the end of the month without doing the buddy read properly. I did do this. I feel good about getting that done, um, but I have today off. So I will be reading Incubus, volumes one, two and three, and I'm going to be binging it. And then that's it. I'm going to just maybe, <laughs> I'll maybe do a couple little check-ins as I'm going. But I'm just going to try and get this done today. I'm also going to be filming a few videos, editing a few videos, trying to get some more things up on my Patreon uh, as well. I'm going to have my coffee. I'm going to go film my October haul video now so I can try and see if I can get that up um, ASAP because I was super, super late with the September one. But it just depends if the editing software is actually working. It's terrible. I'm not sure I'm going to like this. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to like this. I'm going to have thoughts and feelings. And they're not going to be the same thoughts and feelings as I have with the vampire and his pleasant companions. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to be dire. Um, so look forward to a roasting. Um, so yeah, that'll be coming <laughs> now. So, um, it got really dark and grey and I've been doing some editing on some of videos. So they're still exporting. And it's a little bit, it's quite a bit later in the day. <laughs> but I have finished volume one of Incubus. Um, there was a point in time when I was just like, I hate this. I hate this so much. I hate it. I hate it. Um, because, and not for the reason you would think. Because I've had this in my mind that I was not going to enjoy this. And I can't say I am. Um, but not for the reason I thought I wasn't going to enjoy it. I don't... I'm not enjoying it because it's not a very well-crafted story. It feels very... Uh, telly and not showy. In the way that, I mean, I literally just finished last month, 
the week last month, the month before, month, whenever it was, a few weeks ago, the last buddy read was Core Scramble. And it lacked in the ability to explain things and also to show things in a way that made it enjoyable for the reader. And this is the same. I'm not enjoying it because it's a lot of exposition. I mean, why do we have these things? Why do we have all of these things? It's just blah, blah, blah in his head, in his head. They're not likable characters. They're not enjoyable characters to be around. The art is very black or white. It's very comic strip. And I was thinking it's because of the tonal usage. There's no tonal usage. And you're like, hold on. There's tone right here. Yeah, but they're tonal blocks. There's no nuance. There's no detail. The tonal blocks um, mean that there's grey. There's black. There's white. There's grey. The tone isn't really used very much. Like, there's a bit of tonal work here. But it's not... It's not really... Um, It's not really manga-like. Like, that's kind of an interesting one for the tone work, but it's it's just the same. It's very samey. It's black and white and grey. The tone isn't there to add detail. It isn't there to add depth. It isn't there to add um, interest. And it, it's, it's comic-like. This is very comic-like. Black and white. There's not a lot of interest in the tones. The tones that are being used are just block tones. This doesn't feel like manga. It feels like comic. You know? Um, and I can understand that because it's an OEL. Maybe I'm projecting. <laughs> but this is like super... Uh, let, let me try and recreate facial expressions from other manga's works. This... This is like an old fashioned shonen jump type. You know, it just, it doesn't, ugh. Mm. And also the storytelling and all of the, the words and the lack of explanations in areas where you need an explanation and then the over explanation when you're just like, couldn't you have just shown that to us instead of telling us? I mean, look at this. Ugh. It's just, ugh. It's very black, white, grey. That's it. And it's way too much exposition and not enough action. These are the action pages. And that was it. It was like, alright then. And then there was a, an extra story at the back, which is a sci-fi story. So I can't say I'm enjoying it, but not because I thought it was going to be... I thought it was going to be like super problematic. I mean, it is. The guy, the main guy is an incubus who, you know, sexually assaults him in his dreams. But there might be reasons behind that, but we're not getting told that. And I got to say, the the creator's explanation at the back was a bit like, all right then. Um, there's a lot of big words used, and I'm like, um, <laughs> I do not think that word is what you think it is. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's not the way you maybe want to. I don't know, it's the language used, the text, everything. I'm not enjoying it. I'm also bored. I was actually bored at a certain point, just being like, all right then. So yeah, we'll see how volume two goes. It's thicker. That's not necessarily a good thing. But each of these volumes gets progressively thicker. Great. <laughs> Anywho, an incubus and someone who has a soul that is... Uh, accessible maybe that's the word uh, so I will continue because one of my videos is still exporting so I may as well just continue reading this and I'll check in when I've done volume 2 and probably go get a cup of tea or coffee or something um, yeah it's quite later now so I might just have some tea so I don't stay up too late but yeah not really feeling it but didn't think I would so it's a lot later um, I'm still here but my my uh at least my videos and stuff have, have been edited and I'm, I'm doing well on that um and i watched a wee bit of tv um whilst trying to read this because honestly i could not 
could not focus on this on 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 its own. It's so frustrating. I hate it, but I hate it because it's such shit storytelling. It's such shit, such shit storytelling. It's so awful. Um, it's like the person, like the creator, is like one of those hipster first year uni students who think they're all so great because they swallowed a fucking thesaurus and they try using all of these long, convoluted sounding words. But they don't actually know how to use the word. And many of these sentences aren't even sentences. If you had told me that this is a translation from English by someone who's not a native English speaker, I would have believed you. I would be like, oh, okay then. So in in the native language, it makes a lot more sense. But in English, it's not making sense. Maybe they've done like a literal translation because this is not good English, some of these sentences are not fucking sentences. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It's like someone, like the creator, decided to try and make some, you know, hoity-toity, highfalutin, uh, cerebral exploration of philosophical points to do with self-esteem and neglect and uh, abuse and self-hatred, and uh, internalised homophobia, and uh, sexual desire, and and thought they were being really smart, and instead what they've produced is absolute fucking shit. It's shit, it's shit, it's shit. This is shit. This is absolutely horrendous. There's no real skill in storytelling it's exposition 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 i'm glazing over i want to stop reading this isn't how you tell a story this is shit i <laughs> hate it i don't enjoy any of this and and it's repetitive and repetitive and repetitive and it's like oh i'm gonna use this and i'm gonna do this and oh it's gonna be great and it's bs this is a terrible, terrible, not manga. Ugh. And I and it, it can't even be classed as an original English language one because this isn't actually fucking English. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. That I have to read volume three. Ugh. And I don't want to. I just want to go to bed. You know what? I might, I might, just, I might just read volume three tomorrow. I don't want to. Don't make me. Don't make me. <laughs> Oh god, it's so awful. I don't care. And look at all this. Look at the text. Look at the text. Look at it. Look how much fucking words you have to read to to make the story keep going. And 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 I guarantee none of this none of these words are necessary. You could you could pare down what happens in this page to about, I don't know, 10 10 words could probably have that and it would convey as much as much useful information it is a waste of fucking time i'm so mad i am not enjoying this at all i'm bored and i'm annoyed and i have got volume three to read and if i read it then it's done and i don't ever have to look at this ever again i'm so pleased i got this <laughs> Um, because it completed my my set, my kitty media set. But other than that, I could not care less about it. Could not. It is horrendous. I mean, I did think when I read this uh, first little thing about Judas, about him not having any desire, and I was like, oh my god, are we getting another exploration of asexuality in a in a BL manga? Woo! a spooky BL manga looking at asexuality no it's not it's not it's self-loathing and internalized homophobia um it's it's like written from the perspective of someone who has like uh I don't know maybe someone who's been raised in Christian you know super strict um moralistic uh, setting 
and 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 therefore they've been taught to reject their sexual desires and needs and um and to look at their body as something that is pure and you know all of that purity culture bs um that that really does a number on people mentally um this is what this feels like that that the person who's created it is has has been brought up in that uh sort of setting or is trying to replicate that um but i don't think they're doing a good enough uh philos- philosophical exploration and i don't think they have the skill um to to incorporate that into storytelling to create a competent story narrative and art work that that carries the story along they they are not skilled enough to do that um so yeah i'm not impressed and i'm bored and i don't like it and i have a very thick third volume to go look how look at the difference look at the difference it's like double it my god yeah i'm not i'm going to bed i'm going to bed i will read volume three later i do not care i mean it was kind of i mean look at that that is a lot of shit i'm gonna have to wade through that's what it feels like oh my god it's so different from the vampire and his pleasant companions it's like going from the sublime to the ridiculous this is the utter ridiculous compared to the vampire and his pleasant companions which was sublime hate it hate it i wonder if i wonder if bazaar and, and katie also hated it oh my god i hated it so much i do not want to i do not want to <laughs> i haven't even told you what the story is about because honestly what what is it about what is it about i don't know anyway i'm going to bed <laughs> i'll check it with you later so, um, I have now finished volume three uh, of Incubus and thank fuck for that. <laughs> oh my god. The level of hate I have for this. The level of hate. My god. If this was a novel and I was listening to it as an audiobook, I would have had it on like times five speed just to get through it. Uh, it was horrendous. It was horrendous. Volume three was so long was so long and so unnecessary <laughs> and you know what happened you know what fucking happened guys you got to the end and here was the kicker the absolute kicker to be continued are you kidding me are you kidding me this isn't even a three volume series it's a to be continued oh my god the pain um because i was like oh at least it'll be over in three volumes yeah it is but not because that's the end of the story not because any questions are answered not because any history of characters are given not because it makes any fucking sense at all no no it's it's just because the the creator had a mental breakdown. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but that's what happened. And they gave us the whole story. They gave us a whole story. They fell into depression and they got a letter from their unrequited love telling them to stop communicating. And um <clears throat> and they ended up in which is really quite serious. They ended up in a um psychiatric um award which is incredibly serious and then they're slowly getting back to themselves and i wish them well i wish them well i really do um i don't i don't want to say that it i mean do i want to say this do i want to say this it kind of tracks that this has been created from the mind of someone who's maybe not uh, focused lacking a little bit of focus I would say this is definitely lacking focus but I want to be kind because the art style is not to my taste but it's still competently done not to my taste but not 
not terrible. Um, the characters are interesting, uh, if disjointed and lacking uh, fully fleshed out um, backgrounds and motivations. They all have the same motivation. The three main uh, uh, creaturey things, they all have the same motivation of lost love and, and trying to be with the person they love. It was basically three of the same characters battling each other out for the same thing, which was they lost love um, in three volumes. I am so glad that I have read this because then I never have to read it again. <laughs> oh my god. This is going down as the absolute like number one worst thing I've read this year. No problems. I mean in in a way it's great cuz I'm like do I want to do want to slag this off? Yes. But do I want to now knowing that this the poor creator has has gone through some really emotional shit. No, I don't want to slag it off. Unfortunately. <laughs> I don't want to roast it as much as I really want to roast it because in my mind I'm going, don't be a dick. <laughs> this person has gone through some shit. Give them, cut them some slack. Um, and this is OEL. So you know I'm going to go in with a negative opinion. So it can't be helped. It can't be helped. It's not like I'm going to be like, oh, I really enjoyed this. This was really great uh, for an OEL. It's an OEL so I'm not going to like it. So it was never going to be a five-star read. But the fact that it has so many flaws, that it's lacking in so many different areas, storytelling, craft, technique, art, uh, detail, comprehension, (laughs) English-level comprehension. If you had told me that honestly, if you told me that this was a translation from another language, I'd be like, oh, okay, they didn't do a very good job. It was almost as though someone wrote a sentence and then got a thesaurus and tried to change every word in the sentence to be a, a random word in the thesaurus to replace that word. And therefore, the sentence that you have at the end makes no sense because not all words are synonyms in all contexts and therefore you cannot do that you can't just replace a word and think that it's going to be a sentence they weren't actual sentences and I think that was the biggest thing I mean if you as an English teacher (laughs) previously haven't been an English teacher if I read bad English it's like sacrilegious to me and the fact that this is an original English language work means that um, it, it's unforgivable. Incubus is horrendous and very difficult to get hold of and very expensive to get hold of. Generally, volumes one, two and three, to get all three together, it's a pretty tricky thing. And for for me to slog through these three volumes... <sighs> And for them to to just have a to be continued at the end is a real kick in the teeth. Uh, I cannot recommend this in any way, shape or form. This is going to go down as, as I would say. I mean, at least I finished. I finished it. There's a couple of things I've definitely DNF this year. I've, I've been, but I didn't. I don't think I disliked them. <laughs> and if I could have DNF'd this, I would have. But this was a buddy read with Katie and Bazaar. And I wanted to get it done. Because I want to have it read so I can put it away and never see it again. Ever. It's the worst thing I've read this year. I, I'm trying to think of other things we've read uh, for buddy reads. And, you know... uh. In comparison, the other OEL, which um, we read for, what was it, Servant and Lord? 
and that was pretty ap- appalling and I kind of hated that too but there was merits to it and it made sense I mean it, it was disjointed and, and meandering and it, it had no coherency but it made sense on a basic level this does not um, and I would not wish this on anyone please do not do this to yourself do not read this if you can help it um <sighs> And I can't even tell you what the plot is because there is no plot. I mean, I think the biggest sin is that I was bored AF. And that's not something you want from a title that's called Incubus. You know, you want it to be sexy and cool. And I mean, there's a lot of action shots, but oh, nothing happened. Like, oh. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> that's all I've got to say about that. Um, so yeah, I hope Katie... Uh, well, actually, I don't hope Katie or Bazaar enjoyed this. Because if they did, <laughs> I have to seriously <laughs> question their taste. <laughs> because, oh my god, what? What? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it was okay. Maybe they thought it was all right. And hey, you know, swings and roundabouts. Everyone's different. Everyone's different. But yeah, I cannot. Uh, I cannot believe that. Look how thick this is as well. Man, it's so terrible. But yeah, um, I will probably actually have to divide this vlog up into two. So this might just be one long vlog. Or it might be the end of a second vlog. And I'm thinking it might have to be the end of a second vlog. Because I've got a lot of rambling and and uh, <laughs> me just being annoyed about this. Um, so yes, this might be the end of a second vlog or just one. Either one. Thanks for watching to the end. Sorry it's a bit boring. Probably is. And me just being ranty about this. Um, <sighs> From the sublime to the ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Hopefully I'll get these um, vlogs edited up. If you're seeing this, then I have. Yay! Um, I'm going to I'm gonna go off and um, message. <laughs> message Bizarre and Katie and be like, Yo, what did we think? Because, um... <laughs> so yeah. Uh, thanks for watching to the end of this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I did not enjoy this. Uh, did you enjoy my pain? Oh. Good. <laughs> my pain my pain amuses you thank you um but yeah recommendation for this do not get it do not read do not do that to yourself so yeah take care guys i will see you in the next video bye